Ah, Jacob talking about wind. Today. Another one of my favorite things. It, it is, but at least we don't have a blizzard. No blizzard yes. warnings. We're not going to have a blizzard with Good. this crazy winter storm, but uh, we have a lot of wind typically in North Dakota, that's for sure. This go around, we don't mm. have to worry about the winds too much, but yeah. last Tuesday was a very significant yeah. gusty wind event, and I thought it deserved its own Morse code of weather to kind of explain why we had those very strong winds last Tuesday, October 17th. As a reminder, we've talked about winds on a larger scale before on Morse code of weather. It's the different between pressure. It's caused by uh, air wanting to go from high pressure to low pressure and the bigger the change in pressures that causes stronger winds. This is typically referred to just our gradient winds when you have a strong pressure gradient from high pressure to low pressure, big difference in pressure, and that's usually over a larger scale. But what happens with the more finer scale winds, those wind gusts, we'll get into that within the next couple of minutes. But we do have a little bit of a peak here in our average wind speeds in the fall, not as strong as we usually see our wind speeds in the springtime, but it's those clashing of seasons when we go from summer to winter, in this case, when we can see some stronger winds like we had last Tuesday, October 17th. These were a couple of crazy videos from Montana with tumbleweed stacked up and rolling about the landscape. Of course, it looks very different today, but we did have wind gusts over 80 miles per hour in a couple of isolated spots, blowing dust last Tuesday, as well as some toppled trees and trailers. But these were the wind gusts from last Tuesday, over 70 miles per hour in a lot of spots, but over 80 miles per hour in Freiburg. And the North Dakota Agricultural Weather Network has a couple of cool sensors that we can look at. These are the wind gusts at 33 feet above ground level last Tuesday. As that cold front was sliding through, you could see wind gusts over 50, 60 miles per hour just behind that cold front. That was one of the transport mechanisms of getting those strong winds aloft to mix down towards the surface. And you can see once those sensors are reading the wind gust speeds, at 10 feet above ground level last Tuesday on that cold front and behind it, that's where the wind gusts were the strongest. So why are we, were we getting those winds to mix from a couple hundred feet above our heads down to the ground and cause some impacts last Tuesday? Well, the sun heats the ground unevenly. We have strong winds aloft, they're much stronger, a couple hundred feet above our heads. And as that sun heats the ground, the warm air rises from the ground in different spots. We get mixing to take place within the atmosphere, and that can pull some of those stronger winds aloft down towards the ground. Cold fronts and showers, both of which we had last Tuesday, can help to pull those stronger winds down from aloft to the surface. That frontal surface or that frontal boundary can help to pull those winds from a couple hundred feet that are, you know, 50, 60 miles per hour down to the ground. And what happens is you use enough turbulence in this lowest level of the atmosphere that creates that mixing. That allows for the winds to come from a couple hundred feet up down to the ground in what's called the planetary boundary layer, the PBL. That thickness varies based on daytime and nighttime, but within that mixed layer, which is closest to the ground, the boundary layer of the atmosphere, we can get that mixing to take place and those winds that are a lot more uniform and stronger aloft to mix down into the planetary boundary layer where they're a lot more turbulent due to friction with the ground and cause some impacts. So a couple of reasons why we get the turbulence closest to the ground and we can get these more erratic wind gusts where your neighbor might have a couple uh, more miles per hour on their anemometer compared to you. Well, mechanical turbulence is caused by structures or vegetation along our landscape. Thermal turbulence is caused by the rising and sinking of air because of that uneven heating of the sun across the landscape. Shear turbulence is because we have the winds blowing faster aloft than they are at the surface. You can create some what's, what are called eddies or just gusty, erratic, circular motions to winds. And we have frontal turbulence like we had last Tuesday with that cold front coming through that can swirl up the atmosphere and cause for some more mixing. So the impacts of that turbulence and the friction along the ground on our winds that modifies those wind speeds and those very temporary peak wind gusts the thermal turbulence because of the surface heating and just the roughness of the, sur of the surface that all kind of plays into a factor here where you can have mountains or 
little ridges in the landscape, funneling winds, and that can create for stronger winds at certain spots. Also, something interesting that happened last Tuesday, and this was a radar loop from the Bowman radar in southwest North Dakota. There was some bad data that popped up when those really strong winds were coming through, when that cold front was swinging through with those showers. That's some anomalous uh, propagation, and what's happening here is what we're referred to as super refraction, where the radar beam is being bent greater than normal back towards the Earth. And if that bending is severe enough, it can actually intersect with the Earth's surface in a phenomena called ducting. So the radar beam is going out from the radar site. It's trying to detect precipitation, but if there is more density or if there is more wind gust, a mixing of the atmosphere and showers, that can kind of push that radar beam closer to the ground and actually detect the Earth's surface. So some interesting things that happened there when we had the strong winds last Tuesday, all about the mixing of the atmosphere and getting those winds from a couple hundred feet above our heads right down to the surface. And you can see that even in big storms like this, fortunately, we don't have to deal with the super gusty winds with this storm just based on the strength of the area of low pressure and how those uh, boundary layer conditions impact what's a couple hundred feet up in the atmosphere. Yeah, and so now we got so much going on, right? Now we got this natural refrigeration, so it's gonna be colder <laughs> than it would have been, right? At least we don't have the, the high wind. But I remember that last week when we were mixing in those, those mm -hmm. you know, hot, warmer temps from a loft down to the surface. Remember the 70s? Remember way back when? <laughs> remember <laughs> dust oh, and yeah. tumbleweeds? So that oh. Yeah, the dust and tumbleweeds, that part was no good, but uh, it did make it warmer before the front came through. Mm -hmm. It actually, temps actually spiked a little bit, but yeah, not, not now, not for nope. a while. Big yeah. change. Yeah, thanks a lot, Jacob. You're welcome. Thanks, Jacob.